three plays of Michael Jordan's career. It's up to Michael Jordan. Four seconds. Big shoot. And a number 20, Jordan put Patrick Ewing in a body bag. Flynn gets chased into the corner, comes right back. Oh, yeah. Through the foul! Yeah. Wow! Oh, damn. damn, Jordan's terrified. And if you don't watch your back, he'll hit you with game winners like number 19. Yeah, Jordan's too good. You know, at number 18, he got a shot with his eyes closed. Man, even Jordan didn't see that coming. And no one saw number 17 coming either. The time MJ completely faked out the Orlando Magic. Deal now, stolen by Jordan from Hardaway, picked him. Bluffs one at the line, they leave him open. Oh, oh the Bulls are up. Oh, baby. He left jock scraps all over the hardwood down here. Oh, but how he read that play to steal the pass, Brent. This man Jordan makes it look easy. Yeah, it still doesn't top what he did at number 16. Because Jordan went toe to toe with the bad boy Pistons. It made him look stupid. Calm you down, they'll work their plays. Steal, he kept it in bounds. Here it is again. This is one for the book, UB. He's done a lot of great shots, but I've never seen this before for them. I tell you, Prime Jordan was a menace. But so was old hat Jordan. Because in number 15, he hit the greatest block of his entire career at 38 years old. Oh, wait to Mercer. Mercer on the run. Jesus, he really snatched the game out of their hands. But that's expected from Jordan, because in his 14th best play, he proved he had hops since he was a rookie. Bulls as Jordan has come up with another steal. Oh, no time for Mr. Jordan. Ooh, he had his tongue out and everything. This dude is lethal, and he proved that to Alonzo Mourning in his 13th best play. Pippen gets it to Jordan. Michael challenges and slams. Look at his tongue out over Alonzo Mourning. Yes! Damn, Jordan really gave that man a facial. That's just dirty. But at number 12, he did the Utah Jazz even dirty. Because in the 1997 NBA Finals, Jordan ripped their hearts out. Foul limit. We're down to five. Jordan putting moves on Russell. We're down to two. Down to one. Here's Jordan. Yes! Jordan is just different, which takes us to number 11. See, in 1994, Jordan quit the NBA to join a different league, the MLB. And it's here that he knocked it out of the park. Bottom of the eighth, number 45, Michael Jordan. The pitch, it's a line drive to deep left center field. It's going, going, gone! Michael Jordan with his first professional home run. Yeah, my man was hitting home runs in the MLB. What can't Jordan do? Well, we're in the top 10 now, so the plays are getting even crazier. And we gotta talk about the shot that turned MJ into MJ. See, back in 1982, Jordan was playing in the NCAA championship. And with just 20 seconds left in the game, and his team down one, MJ got the ball and made history. 40 to black. The tie, 18. Shot, Jordan! North Carolina has won the 1982 NCAA Championship. Not only did this shot win MJ a championship, but it also made Michael Jordan 
a household name. Well, up until that point, no one knew who I was. You know, I was a college kid, other than, the, mm. you know, the university. But uh, outside the university, I was just known as Mike Jordan, you know. And when I hit that shot, my whole name became Michael Jordan. Yeah. The kid made it big. And if we're talking big, then we gotta mention number nine. The time Jordan came face to face with a giant seven foot two. Kim Bay Mutumba. Mike, come on, man. The Kim Be for real, you haven't got me yet. Mike, Kim Kim Bay. don't even try it. You want me to go call Scotty? You have to call Scotty. I haven't got you recently. Yeah, I agree with no, that. No, you haven't got me in the six years. One, two, three, just go ahead and say it. Kim Bay. No. Never. He said, I'll get you one day. No. <laughs> he never dunked on you. He never Face put you on the highlight. Yeah, Jordan took the trash talk personally. So a few months later, during the NBA playoffs, Jordan officially got his revenge. The MJ. Oh, oh, he did it! Hey, Michael shakes the finger, but he finally got his dunk on Mount Matumbo. He never dunked on you. He never Face put you on the highlight. No. No. He said, I would love to have you in my poster, but it's not happening. It's not going to happen. <laughs> he even hit him with the finger wag. And he got Matumbo good. But there's one duck that's even better. Because in Jordan's eighth best play, he hit the most iconic dunk of all time. straight flying. And with players like these, you think Jordan's game was perfect. But in number seven, there's one thing that everyone's criticized him for. His three-point shot. Here's Pippen. Jordan for three. He's in the league, and that makes a major difference. For three, Jordan missed badly. Oakley tosses it back out there. But in 1992, he made them all eat their words. Because in game one of the NBA Finals, Jordan was lights out. of the night, Jordan had hit an NBA Finals record, six three-point shots in a single half. Yeah, he was unstoppable. But in number six, there's one player who disagreed. See, this is Gerald Wilkins, and in 1992, he nicknamed himself the Jordan Stopper. Cleveland, in the offseason, brought in Gerald Wilkins to be the Jordan Stopper. I'm looking forward to it, no question about it. Uh, I think the number one thing is that it's my job to go out and put the job on him, to shut him down, keep his number. down. Yeah, Gerald had a death wish, and later that season, he got exactly what he deserved. Because in the 1993 playoffs, this happened. Well, you just have to come. You just have to come. 2.5 seconds, Jordan, again! And you just have to he come. He's done it again! Yeah, the Jordan stopper didn't stop a damn thing. But some plays are even bigger than basketball. Because what Jordan did in his fifth best play started a dynasty. It was June of 1991. Michael Jordan was playing in his very first finals. And after losing game one, he knew if he was going to win his first ring, he needed to flip the script. So in game two, Jordan went on a rampage, dropping 33 points and hitting the craziest layup of his entire career. The look away to Levingston. Jordan. Oh, a spectacular move by Michael Jordan. That's 13 consecutive field goals. And just a couple of games later, Jordan knocked off the Lakers winning his first NBA championship, marking the beginning of the Bulls' dynasty. That is legendary. But it's still not as legendary as number four. A shot so iconic, people literally call it the shot. 
He looks. He looks. He looks. He gives to Jordan. Jordan to the circle. Puts the shot in the air. Good! The game's over, and the Bulls have won. Jordan beat him at the buzzer with a jump shot in the circle, and Chicago has knocked off the Cavs 101 to 100. Man, it's hard to believe Jordan could beat a play like that. But we're inside the top three now. So, from here on out, the plays are straight up goaded. I'm gonna kick things off. We gotta talk about the sickest game of Jordan's career. See, back in 1997, the Bulls were facing the Jazz in the NBA Finals. And with the series tied at two, it was do or die time. But there was one big problem. Now the big story here tonight, the story concerning Michael Jordan's physical conditions. This Jordan arriving about two hours ago, he is suffering from flu-like symptoms made his way onto the court just moments ago and as you see right here looking a bit shaky he was up all last night spent all day in bed did not eat at all did not uh, go to the shoot around earlier today did not practice so uh, his status is uncertain yeah jordan had the flu so it seemed like the bulls title dreams were doomed but in the face of adversity jordan dug deep and balled out and Jordan trying to slip it, and then pull it back and hit. There's so much of the load. It's one a sec. Back to back, horrible turnovers for Utah. And Jordan puts moves on Hornacek. Jordan to the crossover. Yes. Jazz lead. And the steal by Jordan. From behind the back on Russell, he turned it around and finished the Pippen. Jordan, see the ice bag being applied to the uh, the back of the neck of, of Michael, who has been exhausted right from the start. Jordan fires for three. Yes. And he's tied the game at 77. Ten on the shot clock. Pippen backing on the set. There's Jordan. Yes. Three-point Chicago lead with six and two ten seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Chicago Bulls have defeated the Utah That night, Jordan dropped 38 points and grabbed the dot, solidifying this in NBA history as the flu game. Just a couple of days later, Jordan capped it off by eliminating the Jazz and winning his fifth ring. <laughs> Damn, it's like every shot this dude makes history. And that takes us to number two, the shot that made Michael Jordan a GOAT. Chicago, 17 seconds. 17 seconds from game seven or from championship number six. Jordan, open. Chicago with the lead. Timeout, Utah. 5.2 seconds left. Michael Jordan running on fumes with 45 points. Stopped it. Harper's on it. Behind the screen. Harper got a piece of it. It comes off. The Chicago Bulls have won their sixth NBA championship. And it's their second three-peat. Six rings. This man Jordan became an icon. And it's hard to follow up a play this big. But we still got number one, because Jordan turned the most heartbreaking moment of his life into the greatest achievement of his career. See, in June of 1993, Michael Jordan was on top of the world. He had just beaten the Suns in the NBA Finals and won his third championship in a row. Seemed like nothing could stop Jordan. But just a month later, his entire life changed forever. Last night, we began the show with the disappearance of Michael Jordan's father. Tonight, the worst fears have come true. James Jordan was found dead, the victim of an apparent murder. Jordan was crushed. His father meant the world to him. He got him into sports, kept him disciplined, and helped him achieve his dreams of becoming an NBA champion. So without his dad, Jordan's passion for basketball vanished. And a couple of months later, he officially retired from the NBA. Hey, my success has been as much as their success. 
they have been a part of that. Uh, my family's been a part of that. My wife, my father, who, as everyone knows, has, uh, has left us. And uh, I guess the biggest positive thing that I can take out of uh, you know, my father not being here with me today is that he saw my last basketball game. And that means a lot. Yeah. Jordan spent the next year and a half mourning his father. But in 1995, the time for grieving was over. Because MJ knew in his heart, just like his dad once knew, that Michael Jordan belonged in the NBA. So in that, the GOAT returned. It came in a two-word statement, which is now just begging to have a Nike campaign built around it. Quote, unquote, I'm back. And in his first full season back, Jordan unleashed, bringing Chicago all the way back to the NBA Finals, where on June 16, 1996, Father's Day, Jordan earned his greatest achievement yet. And the final second, the Chicago Bulls. Bob uh, Michael, I know that the first one was sweet, but how much sweeter was this one? Well, you know, it, I can't even put it in words. My father just what it means to me. I know he's watching. To my wife, to my, my kids, to my mother, my brothers and sisters. This is my daddy. I'm very happy for you. Wow. Jordan did his dad proud. Now that's good.